I've been an AT&T streaming TV customer for a while now, so let's talk about whether it might be a good consideration for your live TV needs. We cut the cable cord a while back, at least a handful of years ago. I was tired of paying cable rates, but more so I wanted to consolidate as much video viewing as possible into the Apple TV versus using additional cable provider boxes or TiVos as we had been for many years. I joined in the early days of cord cutting when internet streaming for live TV was pretty new. Sling and others were just getting started and it was very cost effective to do so at the time. The one service though that stood out to me was DirecTV Now. And through the years, AT&T and DirecTV have struggled mightily to figure out what to do with this thing. DTV Now turned into multiple AT&T branded services then AT&T TV for a bit, and now finally might have a final home as Direct TV Stream. After consolidating all this technology as well, AT&T has also spun it back out into a single company again. TBD what the future holds next, but I've been generally happy with this service, even under its multitude of names and transitions. Over the years though, at least two things have been consistent with the service. One, the price has crept up. And two, the quality and technical aspects have generally improved and grown pretty good. Currently, DirecTV Stream has four tiers of service from $70 to $140 per month, including various numbers of channels, local, sports, and premium channels, and other add-ons for more DVR that you can purchase on top of that. I'm currently in a bit of a grandfathered plan though, paying $63 a month with several months remaining in my prior AT&T TV contract, for the smallest tier entertainment package, but I'm still granted the unlimited DVR and HBO Max at that price. I use my subscription generally on my Apple TVs as well, but I also access it via iPhone or iPad, as well as my desktop computer via browser. Generally, I use the subscription for news, recording and watching weekly wrestling shows, sometimes other sports, and less so general TV viewing or things like holiday parades and live special events like election or Olympics coverage. Our usual TV viewing habits tend toward watching full seasons of shows either bought via iTunes or through other streaming subscriptions versus linear or live. Like a lot of folks, I grew up in the era of cable TV and so I just generally like having something cable-like available and the chance that I might want to watch or tune into something specific. I've tried local channel only cord cutting with tableaus and such and found it sometimes fine and sometimes a pain when something was happening that I wanted to see but I couldn't. Over the years, a lot's been done to make DirecTV Stream apps better, and to date, I find them to be fairly stable and reliable, less prone to playback issues like stutters or crashes as they were in the past. And I think overall, the quality of the stream itself is actually pretty nice now too, even blown up on an 85-inch Sony TV here. The premium DVR feature is now excellent as well. Unlimited hours with 90 days of retention or 30 episodes per series recording. It makes it really easy to just drop shows into the DVR that I might consider watching and not be concerned about finite space or tuner limits like I would with a local DVR. The retention for me also is more than enough, I find, as most things that I record would be well out of date after that long if I didn't already watch them, like news, wrestling, or some current world event. We have tried some on-demand content from the service, but only sparingly, and it's logistically not that great. One, there's often commercials still, and it's hit or miss though when you might get them or not. It seems to depend on what content, who owns the content, and so on, but when the commercials are there, it's cringeworthy. Many, many minutes of commercials per show, louder volume in the commercials, and so on. Ugh. Honestly, for paying an average of 100 bucks a month for a service, I can't understand at all why any on-demand content in DirecTV stream would even have commercials to begin with. It's off-putting enough that again, we don't even bother and instead we leverage commercial free services or iTunes purchases for shows that we're more dedicated to seeing in an uninterrupted way. In addition, it's also hit or miss what seasons or episodes of a given show you might get, so it's not even a reliable way to always explore a series in full. Consider their on-demand more of uh, an exploration or really just a sampling or for sampling a piece of content very casual watching at best. I am really happy though with the overall quality and usability of the apps across the devices that I use. The guide, accessing recorded items in your library, as well as getting to the on-demand stuff is all pretty easy. On mobile and web, you get 15 seconds skip forward and back, 
and it works through commercials in any recorded content that I've tried to use it on. On the Apple TV, you can also skip using the left and right buttons on the remote, but it goes in 30 second increments, which is fine, and it still does go through commercials. I've become very adept at understanding just how many bumps forward to use to get through commercials and certain content, is the Apple TV lets you hit it multiple times and kind of queue up multiple 30 second jumps, and then you press enter to commit to starting playback again. Of course, you can also quick scroll through the timeline as well. The apps keep a list of your most recently watched channels as kind of a quick list, which I also find really convenient, and it will auto-tune the last watched channel between watching when you relaunch the app. It would be nice to get a little more recording power settings though, but there's enough to record only new episodes versus all episodes, and there's series-based recording with some smart live padding, live event padding as well. I have used my DirecTV stream credentials to log into a number of independent channel streaming apps, and it's worked great whenever I've needed it to. In addition, you can use DirecTV stream as an available core TV provider in Apple devices, allowing for single sign-on for easy access in those downstream apps as well. DirecTV stream also has its own device too. It's Android based. I sold it off, never even opened it, so I can't really comment about it. You don't need it. I use Apple devices, but they also support Roku, Android, Fire TV, and others. Just no game consoles yet, and only Samsung for smart TVs, at least as of the time I'm recording this. You also get 20 in-home streams, which is a ton, but three out of home. That's quite a lot for a family. I tend to be the only one to actually use it though in my household, so I've not really explored the streaming limits at all. Some elements I would like to see improved would be the removal of those commercials and the on-demand content, of course. But in addition, I would like to see them use the home bar on the Apple TV to quick access recent channels or DVR recordings. Right now, there's nothing special shown on the top bar. It's just uselessly pointless. I'd also hope to see 4K, HDR, Atmos, and so on added once that becomes more viable in broadcasted content. You can go to certain sports apps today and such for 4K streams for certain content or events, but it'd be nice to just get it directly from the service and be able to cloud DVR in 4K as well, maybe someday. So that's Direct TV Stream. We'll see what happens when my grandfather's subscription comes off its contract. I found this to be something that you can negotiate like cable, so call them up and see what kind of better deal you might be able to get. And for now anyway, I find it to be a really solid cable replacement that met my goals of consolidating all of our video watching into the Apple TV. Give it a look, and if you have any questions, please ask them in the comments. So look for more content, and of course, please like and subscribe to support the channel. Thanks.